For those of you that know my blog uh, and the, uh, my, the primary focus of most of my mods, this is going to be a familiar sight. This is essentially an unaltered iMac G4 case. Uh, however, what has been altered are the components inside. Now, this is actually very similar to my previous Sandy Bridge mod, but it contains an upgraded uh, motherboard in the form of an Intel NUC. Uh, it stands for Next Unit of Computing, and this is uh, Intel's attempt of bringing small form factor computing to the mainstream. My previous uh, Sandy Bridge mod used a ECX board, which is a uh, really a industrial motherboard which is intended for things like kiosks and digital signage. It's you know really refreshing now to see uh, these small form factor boards released uh, with a uh, mainstream consumer intent like the Intel NUC. And one of the big advantages of this mod versus any of the previous ones is that this is a very easy to find, very available, you know, from Newegg, Amazon, uh, as opposed to some of the other uh, industrial uh, small form factor boards, which were quite expensive. Uh, oftentimes, you know, it was difficult to find a place that you could get them not ordering in bulk. And the entire focus of uh, the board is different, meaning this is actually intended to work with consumer products. That makes it much easier to find compatible things. Another thing that's really advantageous about this board is its size. Uh, the while the ECX board was small, this board is tiny. It's four inches by four inches, and it fits perfectly within this chasis. It fits into the exact spot where the um, initial hard disk drive, the 3.5 inch hard disk drive fits. And this allows me to actually keep more things, and I'll go through exactly uh, what I was able to keep and uh, uh, how amazing the, the uh, size of this board is and how it let me do that um, as I um, uh, go further into this. But again, you know, this in terms of overall power, it's somewhat of a lateral move uh, in that uh, the previous uh, Sandy Bridge mod was a Core i5, this is a Core i3. However, this does bring with it Intel HD 4000 graphics, uh, which is a pretty big step up from the 3000 uh, in the previous uh, generation Sandy Bridge and in, obviously my previous mod. So uh, I want to start off by just uh, doing a uh, visual inspection and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I apologize for any uh, you know, wobbliness as, uh, as we kind of go around it. But uh, this is the 20 inch. It's, I am using it with the original uh, keyboard as well as a, a wired mouse. Uh, these are the Apple Pro speakers. Uh, I'll go into how those are hooked up in a second. Again, those are the native speakers which did uh, come with the uh, iMac G4, and this is a Bluetooth trackpad you also see uh, on the desk. But anyway, this is actually uh, a, in a very good sh in very good shape, primarily because the plastic is actually new, and I replaced uh, most of the components with you know new uh, components. So taking a look at this just from the side, again, this is uh, you can uh, you can just appreciate just how thin this is for a CCFL. It's, uh, it's pretty remarkable, and Apple was able to do that because really there were no components in here. There was a, a very thin uh, inverter, uh, which was custom built, and there was, a, uh, there was really no a, you know, LCD controller or power source, which are usually found uh, in monitors, which give them kind of this shelf on the back. You know, it's made the uh, obviously a much more attractive computer, but makes the mod you know, that much more difficult. So. Uh, anyway, you see the dome and uh, and the neck, and again the uh, the logo on the back, and just you know looking at you know some of the uh, the ports which uh, I've included. Again, these are not finalized. You know um, they are um, uh, they are I did use a uh, modeling clay to kind of uh, cement them down, but uh, you know I will uh, eventually develop uh, again port casings to just make this a little bit uh, neater. So you know uh, what we see here is the uh, the power button. It is the native power button. Uh, coming out uh, from here is actually the uh, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Uh, this actually uh, goes into the Griffin iFire adapter, uh, which for those of you who don't know, is a small amp which was compatible with the very controversial Apple Mini Jack, which makes these Apple Pro speakers essentially proprietary. I have some uh, I post on my blog 
which mentions uh, you know this connector and how to bypass it if you if you uh, so intend to. I actually uh, uh, have the eye fires, uh, so uh, it was not needed uh, for me. But if again, I actually purchased this before they uh, became so difficult to find and so very expensive. So um, what the eye fire uh, does is it's a small amp. These uh, these speakers are not powered. So it does function as an amp as well as allowing the uh, the mini jack to connect to a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So, so this is a powered amp, and this is yeah uh, as it is the iFire. It does use a um, a FireWire. So just to just to show you, the FireWire is actually you only supplying power. And I thought about internalizing this. However, the jack just comes out at a at a very unusual. Um, place it comes out just right in the center here, um, as you can see. I'm just gonna you know, push the speakers down all the way, but it, it's hard to get this flush with the side. Uh, even when you see the board inside of the side fire, it's uh, it's just very inconvenient. And again, it's something I just didn't want to damage. Uh, so I thought this was a pretty good compromise because this allows me to kind of take the eye fire if I want to use it for something else or uh, allows me to use any speaker with a 3.5 millimeter jack. So you're not limited just the Apple Pro speakers. But what I did is hook this up. This is a FireWire port and the FireWire port is not a connected to any type of a um, real signaling, it's simply power. It supplies 12 volts uh, directly from a Molex connector. So that allows uh, no additional power cables to be needed that you could connect, again, essentially a FireWire for power and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for sound uh, right, uh, to the, um, uh, right to the computer uh, via the iFire and then to the, uh, the Pro speakers. Uh, this is uh, an extra USB port in the... Uh, you know, uh, right over there. And this is the native uh, power. This is the, uh, the same power cord that came with it. There is no external power brick this time around, and that's all thanks to the, uh, uh, the Intel board, which has allowed me to, uh, in, to, use, to uh, keep the native power supply, uh, which results in, again, just one power cord uh, going to be plugged in, and the rest is... There's uh, really no other needed cables. Obviously, I have the extra cables here uh, for, you know, to somewhat affect and to kind of keep the original look. Uh, next, uh, there's, again, a, uh, another USB port uh, followed by a uh, Bluetooth adapter. Uh, this is the iOmega Bluetooth 4. And then another USB port, which I have just connected to uh, an extender, uh, which goes to uh, the you know, the white keyboard. You know, eventually I'll probably end up using a Bluetooth keyboard uh, with this. But, um, you know, I, I do like the the look of the native keyboard with this. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, for right now, I really did like uh, the idea of mimicking uh, as closely as possible the original uh, configuration of the iMac G4. So uh, just this is the one cord which is plugged in. Let me just go ahead and um, I'm going to just turn this on. So, the power supply, the native power supply is very interesting in terms of how, uh, how it functions. And it, um, it took me a while to figure it out. And there are, a, it ended up being very advantageous uh, to using it. But I'll get into that a little bit more later. But I'd like to really just uh, show you uh, the mod and let's go ahead and power it on. So, um, just a comment 